Hello and welcome to Quick and Nerdy, an MSP-friendly channel dedicated to VM-powered solutions for BAS and DRAS offerings. As always, I'm your host, Brandon McCoy, Technical Advisor for North America, supporting our VM Cloud and Service Provider community. And today, we are continuing on with the Service Provider Console series, and this should be the first video that you watch after you set up your Cloud Connect and Service Provider Console. So this is how we onboard our first client. We're going to create a company profile and register the Veeam services for this specific tenant. So no slides today. It's pretty straightforward. So let's jump right into the lab. So as promised, no more slides. We're right into the service provider console. And again, this is part of the service provider console series. So make sure you've watched the other videos on how to set up the console before diving into the creation of companies and the other videos that we'll be watching. So I've already got my console set up. I've connected my Cloud Connect server. I've given the Veeam server whatever storage and replication resources I need. Now I'm ready to onboard my first customer. So if I go to companies right here and I click new, I'm able to create my first tenant. And we'll use the words tenant, company, and customer interchangeably when it comes to the service provider console. So this is my first company, AKA customer or Cloud Connect tenant. We'll give them a name. We'll call this Quick and Nerdy is the name of the company. The other information here, you don't have to enter in. You will want to enter in an email address for this company if you would like to send them a welcome onboarding email as well as information about uh, customer alarms. For now, we're just going to click the next button. So company native or VMware Cloud Director. So for customers who have VMware Cloud Director or orgs that have a VDC, you can enter in those org VDC credentials. For everything else, it's going to be native. You're going to create a username and password for this tenant. Now this can be whatever you want. It's not necessarily tied into anything from the customer. It's just something that you'll create and this will be used when the customer connects to your console. So we'll just say quick and we'll give a secret password here. Now sites, this is your Cloud Connect server and maybe you have multiple Cloud Connects. So one in Atlanta, one in Dallas. Uh, you can select which Cloud Connect server your customer is going to be connected to and we refer to these as sites. So I've only got one. REST API can be enabled if you'd like to do some of your own scripting with the REST APIs that are available in the console. You can also disable accounts um, after a certain day. Maybe you renew this every year or maybe they're on some sort of trial. It's all optional here. Next, so this is the services that you're going to offer your customer. Now this uh, tab here is only on version 7 and later. In the previous versions, there wasn't as many tabs because, frankly, there wasn't as many products that were connected to the console. Now in version 7, we have quite the list of compatible products. So this first checkbox is for standalone Veeam agents. This is for Windows, Linux, and or Mac agents where there is no Veeam server at the client side and instead the service provider console is managing these agents. If your customer has a Veeam backup and replication server at their site, you'll want to turn this on for visibility and some light job management. If you're offering the customer cloud resources through your Cloud Connect server, you'll want to turn this tab on and then you'll need to configure a customer repository with quota. So I'm gonna click add. Now this first drop down, these are all the repositories that I've added to my Veeam Cloud Connect server. This is a Wasabi bucket, and I'm going to give this customer one terabyte of my Wasabi bucket. Now I can also limit the number of machines this customer is allowed to send me for virtual and physical. This can be used if you want to maybe uh, relegate how much they can uh, send you in terms of quantity, not necessarily in terms of storage. That's the quota. So the repository quota, again, is for how much storage they're allowed to send you. The uh, quota for the VMs and 
agents are for the number of machines. And maybe you have a customer who has their own Veeam licensing. So Veeam will actually charge you for the number of Cloud Connect backups you do. So you can li uh, limit that here if you need to. Okay. Uh, there's also the protected protect deleted backup files for. So this is something called Veeam Insider Protection. I do recommend that you look a little more into that either in another video or in the Cloud Connect Reference Architecture Guide. There are some specific details you need to be aware of. But at a very high level, if somebody were to delete backups from the customer side, say an, a malicious uh, hacker or, or an insider employee, the backups would actually be moved to a recycle bin that the customer couldn't reach, and then the service provider would be able to uh, restore those backups. So replication resources, these are for your hardware plans. So customers who uh, have a hardware plan for VMware replication or Hyper-V replication. Now, the actual configuration of this is done from the uh, Cloud Connect server, but once that has been created, you can then register a customer to use that hardware plan. Now, as we can see, these are all optional. That's why I don't have to keep them turned on. The last two, one of them is Veeam Backup for 365. And we're going to have some videos dedicated to that product specifically. But at a high level, this allows me to connect the console to a specific 365 backup server and offer uh, managed services to my customer for that particular organization. And finally, public cloud managed backups. So this is if you have Veeam Backup for Azure and Veeam Backup for AWS. At the time of this recording in version 7 of the console, Veeam Backup for Google is not yet supported. Once you've decided the services that you would like to provide for the client, the next is billing. And these are subscription plans that we create based on various services. And we'll get into the specifics of this when we talk about invoicing, reporting, and ConnectWise integration. Bandwidth is if a customer is sending you Cloud Connect backups, you can limit the number of backups they can send you at one time, as well as the traffic and the gateway pools. So we talked about gateway pools in the Cloud Connect video, and this is the way that you can assign a gateway to a specific client. Now the service provider console does have a web UI and so customers can, if you set it up correctly, log into the console over their favorite web browser and this would enforce multi-factor authentication for those clients. Finally, you can send them a welcome email, like an onboarding type of email and you can also include some bits to download the management agent so their uh, Veeam agents can be connected to the console. Finally, enable company alarm. So all of the alarms that you set in the console are at a global level for all customers. You can also set specific alarms to individual tenants and you need to turn this on to do so. More on that in a later video. That's it for this video on the service provider console series. I hope you found it valuable. Thank you for watching and until next time, keep on Veeaming in the free world.